Hey, everybody. It's Christian Pedersen, joined as always by Dan Dickow. And as you can see on the video version of this podcast, we thank you again always for tuning in. But as you can see, Dan is the more swagged out of the two of us. And so I am now the jealous one because I want that hat. Dan, are you trying to launch that we have merch now? Uh, we're getting close. We've we've got some uh, we've got some gear for uh, our inner circle of uh, our team here in Spokane. You will get yours pretty soon. I'll have to get with our uh, our manager in regards to uh, the person you who handles. A nice call there for our inner circle she, in Spokane. I'm still. She's gonna hate. Her I, her I, I can't put her name out there because she would absolutely hate that I put her name out there. That you know uh, what her job title and description is, uh, but you know who it is. I will get a message to her to get some uh, some some swag, some gear in the I'll mail. Say, I'll, I'll, pe- I'll, I'll peel back the curtain. When we reference like multiple people in a production department, it's all the same woman who is a saintly, saintly woman that puts up with the two of us just meandering around the college basketball season, littering content everywhere for her to clean up and organize into the wonderful product that you all enjoy as Gonzaga Nation. Dan, you're catching us on a mailbag edition. We got a bunch of fans submitted questions. So fans, reminder, you can send these in at Fan Nation Zags on all the social media and or Dan Dickow 21 on social. Dan, I almost blew up my phone. And I know that you did an episode already on the Timmy trade, specifically diving into what that means for Drew. But I almost blew up my phone going straight to Twitter to to send one in to you after that (laughs) Drew Timmy trade being like, unpack the layers of this. It feels like there's a lot of people that want to know a couple of things about it. So I think the two sort of NBA trade questions we have for you are any more thoughts and fallout on that trade and how that's going to impact Drew Timmy in terms of his NBA potential and career. And two, a lot of people want to know your experiences either directly with trades or just indirectly with like how that kind of happens from an NBA player's perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I think first off for Drew, I think it's a great trade that that helps him. Now, it doesn't help him in regards to at, at this moment in time, Milwaukee is going to change his two-way contract to a regular NBA contract. He has to prove that. Um, but what it does is it changes the, the level of contracts uh, or guaranteed roster spots with the Bucks going into the regular season. So the NBA now sits, I believe, at 18. You can have uh, years ago when I played, it was 15, uh, but now it's larger because you've got two-way contracts and you've got some different things, exhibit tens and, and stuff like that. But um, essentially what it does is now that Milwaukee does not have more rosters uh, or excuse me, uh, players on their roster than are available roster spots, it leads you to believe that there is a a, a solid opportunity for Drew to really kind of carve out even more of a home or a niche in the hearts of the front office and the coaching staff to, to make him make them believe that he's going to be there um, and, and convert that to a, to a regular deal. That's, that's my initial thought, my inclination. Um, so that that's good for Drew. When you look at the basketball side and then the cultural side, as far as, as how, how to learn the NBA game for Drew, I think it's fantastic. And the reason why is he now has two, future hall of famers that he's going to be able to learn from leading into training camp through training camp. And then as much as he's around the parent ball club, uh, trying to earn his way and find his way in the NBA, he's going to have a chance to learn from those guys. Uh, Giannis, obviously he's been an MVP. He's won an NBA title. Uh, he's one of the, the, the best players in the world. He, he does it by playing the right way, valuing team, valuing, uh, work, ethic valuing loyalty um yeah he made comments recently that if he doesn't see milwaukee contending he might want to you know get out of milwaukee in a couple years but that's the norm in the nba unfortunately now these days Giannis has been there for a long time uh and i think he's a guy that he can learn a lot from because Giannis was drafted obviously late lottery years ago but there were so many knocks on his game that he had to 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 prove the doubters wrong and I think, you know, granted, Drew Timmy's not a lottery pick, but he's got a lot of doubters that he's got to prove wrong. You know, Giannis as a four doesn't shoot it great from the outside, but he's improved enough to be respectable. He's worked on the things that has allowed him to become a good player 
become now a great player. Now for Timmy, you know, there, we all have talked about the, the, the weaknesses and knocks on his game and we don't have to go back into that, but he has a sounding board or an example of somebody who, you know, has, has been doubted and questioned in certain areas of his game. How do you go about fighting those? Or how do you go about being true to yourself? I think that's, that's, uh, that's huge for Drew. And then when you look at the the impact for Damian Lillard on uh, potentially on Drew is you look at another guy who's been unbelievably loyal throughout his whole entire career with the Portland Trailblazers. Portland has just been a mess of a franchise, uh, in particular with their previous GM, Neil Olshay, where they weren't able to put together a roster around Damian Lillard to give him a chance to really showcase what he could do to the to to the basketball world and really prepare it propel a team deep into the NBA playoffs. They, they, they had a broken roster his whole career. I mean, CJ McCollum's a great player, but you're pairing two similar undersized guards together. They never were able to get a, a inside presence that really paired well with, with Damian Lillard. They weren't able to get a consistent scoring threat from the wing or a shooter to, to relieve pressure. Um, but what Damian did throughout all those years was continue to improve. He kept his head down. He worked. He became arguably a uh, top three point guard in the NBA over the last 10 years. And that's something to say because the other point guards in that conversation, Steph Curry, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, all also uh, future Hall of Famers. I personally think Damian's a future Hall of Famer. But what I think you're going to learn, he can learn from him is the same kind of thing. Doubted coming into the NBA was Damian Lillard. Granny was the sixth pick in the draft, but he came from Weber State, a mid-major where nobody had high expectations from him. He believed in himself. He worked at it. He realized his strengths, fine-tuned those where they were sharp as a sword, looked at his weaknesses, softened those up around the edges, became a, a all-NBA type player seven years now, I think it is. No, he's been an NBA All-Star seven years. So, um, you know, I think for for Drew, what he can learn from, from uh, Damian Lillard is – that stick to itiveness, that growth of your career, that belief in yourself, uh, and then also the leadership aspect and and being true to who you are. Uh, you know, everybody from Spokane and the Gonzaga community knows Drew's got a big personality. Now, Damian Lillard, if you don't know it, he is a quiet, unassuming leader, but he's got a big personality in regards that everybody follows, everybody listens, everybody trusts what he has to say. And I think that's another way that uh, Drew Timmy can learn uh, from a future Hall of Famer. So that's to answer that first part. In regards to the second part of the question, you know, have I got experience with trades? Unfortunately, yes, but fortunately, yes. So it's a hard one to, to say. It's the nature of the business in pro sports. I believe I was traded, golly, I, I don't even, I, I want to say 10 times either eight or 10 times, um, you know, but um, I was traded on draft day. I was traded in the middle of the summer where it really didn't matter because I wasn't living in that particular city. I was traded in the middle of the night where, uh, you know, I had to be packed up and ready to go 36 hours late or 24 hours later to the next destination. Uh, I've been traded in so many different ways. I can't keep track of all of them. Um, but you can look at it in one of two ways as a player that gets traded. One, you can look at it as poor me, this team didn't want me. Or you can look at it as, hey, I got a great opportunity in front of me at this next destination because this team wants me. Now, there's a lot of, uh, you know, sub caveats that in, in directions we can take each of those two, um, you know, thought processes. But at the, at, for for all intents and purposes with with our conversation, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at the impact for Drew Timmy. You can also be the extra guy throwing in at the end of a trade where you're very clearly. And that was me many times. My my salary contract number made it work a number of times. Exactly. And that one can be more frustrating, um, you know, depending on how you look at it. And not saying that you were only a salary dump, but just that that also feels like an unfortunate reality where sometimes people are like, hey, I'm here, too. And they're like, yes, you're affordable. Welcome. We welcome you in. We welcome you with open arms because we can afford you. And I know that that's a real thing in area in the NBA versus college. Next question we had, a reminder, everyone, you can send these in at Fan Nation Zags on all the social media or Dan Dickow 21. People saw the Eastern Oregon game pop up on the schedule. Want to know what's going on there? Is that the last addition to the Gonzaga schedule? Do you like that game? 
I mean, look, you know, it's not the appealing game that most fans are are wanting. I believe, don't quote me on this, Cole Forsman, our, our journalist, can probably dive deeper and, and uh, make sure it's correct. But I believe they do have the opportunity to add one more game now. Um, and once that is added, I believe the, the schedule will get released. But, you know, this Eastern Oregon game, you know, it doesn't move the needle in my eyes one way or the other. Um, you know, quite frankly, most Division One teams are done building out their schedule. They don't have openings to, to add Gonzaga. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, so with this last game that will be added, I think it could be another non-D1. It's hard to say, but um, Gonzaga's played Eastern Oregon now three times. I be- Actually, I believe this will be the third time. Chris Kemp does a nice job uh, for the Mountaineers. They're out of La Grande. Uh, they challenged for their conference title last year. I believe they made it to the NIE. They, they, they were in the NAIA playoffs a season ago. So they are a good program. Um, they return all five starters, um, you know, in, including guys that a, a player, I believe he's a wing, averages nearly 20 points a game. So, you know, no, it's not another, you know, matchup that people would get excited about, about the Pac-12. No, it's not a Mountain West contender or somebody from the Big 12. But listen, you have to fill your schedule with enough games. And, you know, this is a is an opportunity to to get game action. I believe it's still in early November before they head off to Maui. So you're going to be working through some kinks, uh, you know, with with your offense and defense, things you want to work on. Maybe you want to look at another rotation going into that tournament. Maybe you want to, uh, you know, make sure each guy has kind of got a few game reps so that um, you give them a full opportunity of a look early in the season to see if they're worthy of being in the rotation or not. 22 and 11 last year, making it to the NAIA playoffs, as you mentioned before losing in the first round for Eastern Oregon, it almost feels though, like you don't even, like you're saying, you don't even really care about the final score of this one. Cause this is beneficial in certain other ways that you're not going to run out of hypothetical lineup against Kentucky. You're not going to put, game one against Purdue in the Maui invitation be like, Oh, well, like, let's see how these guys go. But you might last 10 minutes of the Eastern Oregon game, get some of those new kids, some different looks and take advantage of the, the time and opportunity to play a varsity game, but in a manageable situation. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the exhibition games, the scrimmages that are, are closed doors, which Gonzaga does have one uh, on their schedule. Uh, I don't know what the, date of that is i do know who they're going to have a private scrimmage against uh it's it's not the time and place to share that because it hasn't been uh publicly said but uh trust me it will be a great test for gonzaga to help get them ready that private scrimmage um you know so um i think i think those type of settings the scrimmage and then these exhibitions are a chance for you know the staff to kind of tweak some lineups um, see which guys play well under the lights. Because uh, to be honest, some players can perform in front of the crowd, as odd as that sounds, some cannot. And you want to sift through that as soon as you can early in a season. It would be a really odd choice for us to burn our bridge with Gonzaga Athletics over outing their private scrimmage this early in the season. I think I'll choose bigger hills to die on. Dan, thank you very much for checking in with us on another mailbag edition. It's always great to pick your basketball brain. Folks, remember, you can find us at Fan Nation Zags on all the social media, or you can search and subscribe Gonzaga Nation wherever you get your podcasts. And you need to get this podcast because if we haven't plugged it enough for you before, we'll plug it again. Dan is working away like a crazy person in the awesome new studio. I see Greg Heiser's face every day popping up on our YouTube. He and Greg have a bunch of awesome interviews. He talked to Stu Jackson. He's talked to a bunch of the players. Like we've talked about this a lot. There's just, there's so much unbelievable content headed your way. That you're not going to want to go find Gonzaga nation, smash that subscribe button, leave a five star. Well, here, yeah. Here's the other thing. So we're sitting here on, on what Monday, October second, um, we've recorded a, a our our weekly show, and we've also recorded our mailbag for the week. Guess what? October 9th, Adam Morrison and I record our first episode for this upcoming season. So we're going to be doing a similar format as to what we did last year, where it's the two of us. Um, but now that we have a studio and, and we've got some flexibility, 
there's going to be many occasions we bring a third person into the studio, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a media member, whether it is a, a former Gonzaga player as well. So uh, lots I of flexibility you. this year with what Adam and I are going to do. Is it Rob Sacre? I'm sure he'll be a guest at, at many times. I you know, so Rob. There is no like. Look, I, I. This will be a, an entire thing that probably our boss is going to say you should have cut that out of the podcast. But I'll tell you, <laughs> as a, as a baseball player in college myself, we are the loosier, goosier, more like we try to be friends with everybody because nobody really cares and gets competitive about baseball. And I could have said, I could, I could just pick up that my vibes and Rob Sacre's vibes, we would have been friends in college. We would have been that like <laughs> that you, that branch out union that starts to like, let's go support everybody. We love every, Rob seems like the kind of guy that he and I probably also would have gotten into a lot of trouble in college together, but hey, maybe that's why I like podcasting with him. But Dan said it exactly. There's amazing content coming all year long. So smash that subscribe button. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys next time.